Alright, let's see if it's possible for me to make a quick video. And of course, uh, this time I want to talk about once saved, always saved, and see what people are saying. Uh, looks like a minute ago this guy made a video. Let's hear what he has to say. saved by believing in Jesus Christ, are they always saved, or can they somehow lose their salvation? This belief that a person is once saved, always saved, is sadly used to justify a lifestyle or activities that are... Right there, right, that word sadly, it's sadly used. It's sad to teach people that they have eternal security. So sad. ...that aren't pleasing to God, but if you're truly saved... Is that even possible? Can you live in sin or can you lose your salvation? Hit that follow if you have questions about faith. Listen, trusting in one saved, always saved can bring a false sense of comfort. It can bring, a, if you're believing that you can be saved, that's a false sense of comfort. You're not saved. That's what he's teaching people. You're not saved. You can never be eternally secure with your salvation. Jesus cannot save you. You have to save yourself by never sinning, which is impossible for anybody to do. It's impossible. The only way you can be saved, according to this guy, is if you never sin. And... Uh, it's impossible. There was a verse here that somebody shared with me last night. What was that? Uh, I think it was something about, I think, it, what was it, Matthew something or another, somewhere in the Bible. Uh, it must have been Matthew 5 and Matthew 18. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thou, I don't know if I can talk as fast as this guy. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast that from thee, blah, blah, blah. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Right? And of course, we see this echoed. Um, uh, what was this verse here in Galatians 4? Where is then. The blessedness ye spake of, for I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked it out your own eyes and have given them to me. Okay, so that's a different context. Uh, Mark 9 is not. It's the same thing. All right, so if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It's the only way that you're going to be saved. You have to be absolutely perfect. In fact, I would contend, pluck out both of your eyes, cut off both of your hands, and then while you're at it, smash your head and pull out your heart. That's the only chance you got to be saved. Because, one, you've already sinned, and two, you're going to continue to sin. you got no chance, Jack. That's what Jesus is saying here. All right, and we could go into what is it, Matthew 18? Um, let's do it this way. I was gonna make this short, but it almost seems impossible. The young man saith unto him, All things, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack? He's talking about the Ten Commandments. He's been perfect since the day he was born. Pure as the driven snow. What lack? What lack I yet? And Jesus said, If thou wilt be perfect. Go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. <laughs> Screw that. I ain't going to do that. So he turned away and, and walked away sorrowful, because he had great possessions. He wasn't going to do that. He was not perfect in any way whatsoever you got no chance to be perfect all right think consider this consider this verse here Romans 3 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God 
You got no chance, Jack. You got no chance at all. In fact, why did Jesus die? Why did he die? He died to cover our sin. Did he not? And by the offering of his body, our our sins covered forever all right so by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all all right so you understand the old testament they would offer daily sacrifices and all that sort of stuff uh, continuously offering sacrifices to cover their sins that's what they did to make offerings to God to cover their imperfections Jesus being perfect offered his body once for all that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life eternal security that's what Jesus Christ preached the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Christ. And once faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. But according to this guy, you're still under the law. If you sin, what happens? You, you lose your salvation? Is that what you're saying? So you got to repent of your sin? Is that what you're saying? you got to repent. In other words, you repenting of your sin is greater than Jesus Christ laying down his life for you, according to him. To so-called Christians that choose to live in sin. But 1 John 3, 9 tells us, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. See, All right, so we've talked about, you've heard me talk about this before, these, these um, Bible perversions, they change the doctrine of God. They change the doctrine of the gospel. They change the gospel. They change the word of God. And so let's do it this way here, 3.9, <clears throat> and just see what, this is the true word of God in the English language. It's the perfect, pure word of God in the English language. And it says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, there's an obvious separation difference between flesh and spirit. Well, of course, we read here in uh, John chapter 3, uh, when Jesus has the conversation with Nicodemus about being born of the God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel ye not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. And look, John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, it's the same John as what we read in John. It's the same John of Revelation. Okay, and he's just echoing what's been spoken of all throughout the Bible when we are born of the Spirit of God when we are born of God we are born of the Spirit of God and his seed we read about that in Galatians I mean am I spelling that right I don't want to I don't want to look like a fool here but um, I want to get this right here uh, in Galatians 3, Now to Abraham and a seed were the promises made. He saith not into seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin for his seed, which is Christ
get that and to thy seed which is Christ so the promise to Abraham and a seed that seed being Christ all right his seed which is Christ remains in him and he cannot he Christ cannot sin God cannot sin because he is born of God he cannot sin because he is one with God he abides in God and God abides in him the spirit that is in him cannot sin all right the spirit that is in you cannot sin your flesh obviously still desires sin but the spirit that is in you is there is capable of leading you away from all sin all right now if you're not born of God you're not going to understand this you're going to say oh if you sin you're going to hell well this guy sins every single dog pooping day yeah you agree don't you buddy I mean it's obvious right every dog pooping day this guy sins just like everybody else by his own measure he's not saved the measure that he puts out forth for everybody else is that hey if you sin you're going to hell you're not saved and now what he's gonna say is forget about what Jesus did for you um, he's going to say that uh, all you have to do is this magical uh, like bewitched or I dream of genie snap your fingers and say you repent of sin and glory to God your sin is covered the death of Jesus Christ doesn't cover your sin you snapping your fingers and saying repent of sin according to this fella you're saved. You're snapping the fingers, saying a little prayer, saying, I repent of sin. That covers your sin. Apparently to him, that's not in the Bible. Anywhere, Matthew 23, verse 13, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. He, so, just like this guy. He's shutting up the kingdom of heaven, saying that, hey, you can't have eternal security you cannot have everlasting life there is no such thing it gives you it's sad and it gives you a false sense of security for you neither go in yourself this guy is not saved he doesn't believe in being sealed and sanctified secure forever does not believe in secured eternal security for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye that are entering to go in. He's not going to suffer them that are wanting to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, right now, this verse perfectly fits these people to a T. All right, let's listen. See, if you've truly been saved, the Bible teaches that you'll forever be saved. But if so-called Christians then choose to live in sin, listen, it's an evidence they were never saved to begin with. No matter how... It's, look, he's saying, if you're saved... Now, this is just a direct contradiction of simple logic. If you're saved and then you sin again, that's evidence that you're not saved. Meanwhile, this guy sins. By his own measure, he's not saved. All right. I mean, it. Gee whiz, man! I tell you what. All right. So f there's just so many verses here. Okay. And let me go. Um, oops. All right. Doers of the law shall be justified. For not he the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there should no flesh be justified. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Uh, so you got to rightly divide that sort of stuff. I get it. 
and the schoolmaster. Uh, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Christ. And of course, we can read in Hebrews 11 all the way back to the days of Noah has the righteousness been by faith. Okay, Noah became the heir of the righteousness which is by faith. It's always been about faith. And this guy has no idea what he's talking about whatsoever. He shaved the side of his head, he slicked back his hair, he got on those fancy glasses, and he talks real fast. Is that evidence that he's saved? Been born of God. See, if you've truly been saved, the Bible teaches that you'll forever be saved. If so See, double speak. These guys are double speak. If you're truly saved, you're saved forever. But if you sin, then you're, you lose your salvation. Double speak. Call Christians then choose to live in sin. Listen, it's an evidence they were never saved to begin with, no matter how convincing their salvation was before. I want you to put your complete trust in Christ. Repent of your sin right now. Pray this prayer. Jesus, forgive my sin. Come into my life and be my Lord. I believe you died on the cross and rose again in Jesus. Why did he die on the cross? You ever think about that? Obviously, he died on the cross to cover our sin once for all, forever. Our sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. Okay, so it, it to me, you catch that? Just repent of your sin. Repent of your sin. That'll cover your sin. I mean, it it's just absolutely nonsensical, illogical, double speak, hell bound, and this is the devil talking. This is not a guy from the from uh, from God. All right, and. I don't know how you could justify or argue, well, hey, this guy's saved. He's just got the gospel wrong. Oh, I think it's deliberate. If you don't have any understanding, I mean, we could talk about issues of the this idea of a millennial reign of Christ. We can talk about flat earth. We can talk about soul sleep. We can talk about all these different issues. These are not salvation issues. This right here that is a salvation issue do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for you or do you believe that you have to be a good person to be saved these are polar opposites and this is a salvation issue and if you're preaching it wrong it's evidence that you're not saved the warning is on your head